I'm in the middle of Greenwich Village at the Tisch School of the Arts, and I'm like, where do gay people get together? So I went to the <laughs> musical theater floor. I was like, let me go to the seventh yes, floor. Like, <laughs> upstairs. That's so, that's like, where do I start? Yeah. I know, the singing. <laughs> Is that Cinderella I hear? <laughs> Yeah, and I was just once again eavesdropping and heard these guys talking about this bar called The Works up by Columbia. So they were talking about like where all the Columbia University guys got together. And I went to The Works and it was so like disorienting to me because I grew up terrified of male competition. I just associated the competition of sports and everything like that. It just gave me anxiety. So my first time walking into this gay bar with all these gorgeous Columbia gay, gay guys and whatnot, I was like, oh shit, now I'm in a realm where it's men competing with men for each other. I can compete. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was terrified. I was uh, like, I just didn't have any experience with, like I was just used to having crushes on guys and thinking, oh, he'll think, uh, he's beauty, I'm the beast. He'll think I'm a monster yeah. if I let him know my feelings, you know? And that was just so hardwired in me. So I got super duper drunk that night at the works. And then at about three o'clock in the morning, I was like, yeah. I was trying to sober up walking out of the bar and I was like, there's a big void across the street. Like I'm so used to looking around New York after this week here of skyscrapers. And I was like, oh, that's not a void. There's trees. This must be this thing they call the Central Park. <laughs> and haven't I heard rumors that gay men congregate inside that park and have sex together? Now, I did not know where in the park that happened. And it's I, a big it's park. It's a very big park. That, that void is, uh, <laughs> goes on for a while. <laughs> So I just started walking into the park, and you know, it was like it's kind of dangerous to walk. I was gonna there. say, did you feel scared at all? I mean, it was the Central Park jogger case had recently happened too. Uh, no, I was like dead set to. I'm like, I'm gonna. Have I'm gonna my get first fucked. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no matter what so happens, no matter what happens, you're gonna get penetrated <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> It was the beginning. My God, I'm walking into this void. <laughs> totally. It was wow. the very beginning. Like, it, it kind of lasted throughout most of my 20s and 30s, the feeling of, oh, gosh, gay bars give me anxiety because it feels like you're auditioning. But going into purely anonymous sexual experiences, like, was a total turn on for me because no one's talking. You don't have to be charming at all. Was it, I mean, was it, <laughs> was it literally like. You just have to like be naked in Doc Martens. <laughs> And, you know, you have ways. When you get in a situation like that, you, you, you're, a sh you're a shower, you know? At that point, everybody's confident. <laughs> Nobody's worried. It's dark. You can just sort of feel around. Is that a was little it, person? I mean, was it so anonymous, like, like you, you didn't even have a full visual? You're just like walk in the bush, you feel? It can be. It can be. But that night was ludicrous because... Th that part of the park is called the Ramble, and I was nowhere near there, right? <laughs> you need the, the part for cruising. Yeah. Is the Ramble. Yes. And, and it's still, it's still happening. Still? Um, yeah. But, like, I heard that, like, maybe last summer, someone had set up a DJ out there. <laughs> wow. Gay like rights has gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> the they gay set agenda. Up a, they set up a DJ, a little, like, mimosa stand. <laughs> So no, no, no. I was like, okay, listen, I'm already lost in this park. I forgot to put down any breadcrumbs. And uh, I'm figuring, look, if I see any male walking through the park, he's probably <laughs> either coming to or fro the for a sex party. So I'll just get together with him. And so I just kind of parked myself in some bushes and waited for someone. And I was like, I'll just shake my branches to alert someone if he passes. And sure enough, like 10 minutes later, like this guy, and, he, and he's, like, he's like wearing Brooks Brothers and has a briefcase. Also, like, are you 18 at this point? <laughs> Yes, I'm 18 from Ohio, a week in New York. And how's your gaydar at this point? <laughs> Not very good. I'm just making these assumptions about people walking through sure. the park. You're the poor straight guy walking through Central Park at 2 <laughs> in the morning like, oh, that bush is waving to me. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. no. So that's the... No, this please don't put your mouth on my dick. No, <laughs> please. Please don't make me a show. 
like, no, no. This, this was like the second story that I ever told on Risk, right? Like it was like, at first we thought we could do Risk as a weekly show. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm not going to be able to come up with a weekly story for 14 years. But anyway... Uh, so it was the second story I ever told, and I was like, I still don't, even though the whole idea of this podcast is that you can talk about anything, I still don't know what the audience can really take. So in the story I have Seven it, inches, eight inches. Exactly. <laughs> in the story I have it that I shake my branches when this guy who is clearly a businessman, who is late from doing his law job or whatever, is walking past... And he looks at me, and he's like, what the fuck is the person in the bushes doing? And he hightails it out of there, and then I collapse and, you know, drunken stupor and end up getting on the train later, you know, waking up, like, a couple hours later, being like, oh, my God, I fell asleep in Central Park, and someone's stolen my shoes. And... <laughs> The train finally comes. It's like five in the morning. I'm so terrified of catching or of not catching it that when the doors open, that's when all the nausea from all the drinking finally catches up with me. I throw up into the train. There's like six or so people on the train. And they've like gone to the other end. They're like, what the? Who waits for the train to stop and vomits into it? But I didn't have time. To, I was like, I got to catch this. So I jump in in my socks and slip on my own vomit. Oh, my God. And then I just wave to everyone like, hello and good night. But then, I, so that's how the story used to end. And then a couple years ago, I was like, I might as, the Risk audience is so used to so much worse than this story now that I might as well admit, I sucked that motherfucker's cock. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Downside. The Downside with John Marco Cerezi.